at the poker table, mistakes are not your enemy. In fact, mistakes are your friend. Actually, your ego, which is preventing you from seeing those mistakes, is your real enemy. Today, we're gonna to talk about identifying mistakes, improving your game based on those mistakes, and you're gonna walk away at the end of this video with some actionable advice on how to improve your EV immediately. Let's dive in. You probably don't like making mistakes. It's not fun to have lost money or cost yourself in any way because of a blunder. Being willing to see your mistakes is critically important. A lot of players I've seen, their ego gets in the way of them noticing and correcting their own mistakes. I see so many players review their own hands and talk themselves into having not made a mistake. Especially since the advent of solvers, this works a couple of ways. Either somebody makes a play, it felt wrong to them, but when they plug it into a solver, it's solver approved. So they say, oh, I didn't make a mistake after all. That's great. And they move on. Uh, alternatively, you might have a play that's not solver approved, but they'll say, well, I, I think that based on my reads on this opponent, it was a good play. And then they'll move on. These two examples, they, they might have been two plays that were great. They might have been two plays that were terrible. Your justification for one and your solver justification for the other might have both been right. The problem is, though, if you're using two different frameworks to analyze your mistake, that's, that's twice as many potential excuses for you to make for yourself. Now, whether it's correct to strive for solver approved plays or plays that are non-solver approved, non-GTO, but good exploitatively, uh, is a topic for another video. Personally, I, I aim towards the latter, but I do incorporate both in terms of how I study and play. The important thing is that you know what you're grading your own play on. Uh, you don't just choose whatever's most convenient to protect your ego from facing the fact that you made a mistake. So in these cases, I think it's fair to say that ego is your enemy and mistakes are actually your friend. Now, why is that? If you almost never make mistakes and you're happy with where you are right now in your poker journey, you're not looking to get better, you're not looking to make more money, then cool. You don't make mistakes uh, almost ever, and you're happy with where you are, congratulations. But for the rest of us, our mistakes are an opportunity to improve. I've played with many of the best players in the world, often heads up, and I can tell you that they all make mistakes. I make mistakes countless times every session that I play. If you think you don't make mistakes, you're probably, and by probably I mean definitely, wrong about that. And what's worse is that you're preventing yourself from getting better at poker because you're unwilling to face your mistakes. In poker, as well as a lot of other areas of life, our mistakes are our best possible clues on our path to self-improvement. But you have to be willing to see them and face them. It's normal to get frustrated by your mistakes. I get frustrated by my mistakes. But I also am able to step back and see them as an exciting opportunity to get better. Let me give you an example. So let's say you are playing, doesn't really matter the game or the spot, you're facing a big river bet. You pretty quickly decide that, you know, I have a good hand, I'm gonna call here. You put in the call. And before your opponent even shows their hand, you think, ah, that's a mistake. And you think of it either because of a read you have on that opponent or something you remembered about what optimal play looks like there. It doesn't really matter. But we've all been there where we make a play and immediately know that it was bad. What most people do is they think to themselves, well, I know why that was bad. I know the right play. So there's nothing to see here. There's nothing to look into. There's nothing to study. I already know that, let's move on, and next time I'll make the right play. This is exactly what not to do about it. If you know, deep down, what the right play is here, and given enough time, you would have figured it out, then that means there's another reason that caused you to make a mistake. It's not a knowledge problem, it's a performance problem. So in this spot, what you should do is really dig in. What caused this performance problem? You had the right answer somewhere deep in your brain, uh, yet you didn't find it in time. Did you act too fast? Are you tired? Are you tilted? Are you otherwise distracted? Um, are you not caring very much about the game or are you scared in some way and it's it's making you play in a defensive manner? There are so many potential reasons for this mistake, I can't tell you which one is the reason that caused you to make that mistake. But digging into them is how you can improve your performance because yes, you make that mistake and maybe for the next hour, maybe for the next day, maybe for the next week, you have that in mind. You, you remember, okay, I need to act a little bit more slowly or maybe you face a very similar situation because it was brought up recently in your memory. You react correctly this time. You were reminded about this concept that you missed in the moment. And so for a while, you won't miss that particular concept. But the problem is the root cause was not you not understanding that concept because it was in there in your brain. The root cause is one of these many reasons that you didn't perform at your best in that given moment. And even if you don't make this particular mistake again, which you probably will months or years later, you were gonna make other mistakes for the same reason. Determining what caused the mistake, that's not easy. I'm not gonna pretend it's easy. That's, that's the hard part of this process. You need to do a lot of self-reflection. You potentially could work with a coach or with a peer. 
uh, and talk through what happened and try to sense patterns and when this kind of thing happens to you. The good news is once you've identified it, it's actually not that hard to figure out how to fix it. If you acted too fast, then you need to have a routine in hand where you give yourself enough time to act. If you were tilted that day, well, <laughs> there are methods to work on reducing tilt. There are also guardrails you can put in place where you quit early or you take breaks uh, at times when you're tilted so you don't find yourself in that situation. If it was uh, a knowledge gap, which the, the problem we're talking about was not a knowledge gap because you knew right after, but let's say you made a different mistake in a different scenario and you realize that you just didn't have the knowledge of how you're supposed to play that spot, either in theory or in practice against your player pool or that particular opponent, well, then you study that spot and you look at other spots like that where you would not know what to do if you found yourself in that situation. Now you know what to study. In all of these cases, by addressing the root cause, you're going to not only fix that exact mistake from happening again, but you're going to prevent a lot of other mistakes. And by definition, when you reduce your mistakes, you're going to increase the number of plays that you play correctly. You're going to increase your win rate. You're going to make more money. One point I want to touch on that I feel is super important is that a lot of players will have the mentality of, I need to not make any mistakes. I need to eliminate all of my mistakes so that I can play my best. And while I applaud the ambition, I don't think it's a wise way to approach the game because if you're attempting to eliminate all mistakes, you're just kind of not living in reality. And you're also setting yourself up for being blind to your own mistakes because you have this vision of yourself. You want to play perfectly all the time because of your ego, want to protect yourself from thinking that you haven't played perfectly. So like we were talking about earlier in the video, you're not going to recognize and identify as many mistakes as you otherwise would. Your goal is not to eliminate mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. You need to accept that you're going to make mistakes. I'm going to make mistakes again and again and again in poker, in life, everywhere. And having that mentality, knowing that you're going to make mistakes, it's not an excuse, but it's a healthy relationship with performance. Um, and it allows you to see those mistakes when they happen, not have any resistance that, that blocks you from seeing them, and then you can address them. What you should be looking to do is reduce the frequency of your mistakes. When you're looking at things through the lens of, I want to reduce the frequency that I make these mistakes, and I want to reduce the magnitude of the mistakes when they happen, you're not only having a much healthier and more realistic view of how performance works, but you're going to find solutions more frequently. You're going to recognize that, okay, maybe I take breaks more often when I play because instead of making five mistakes an hour, now I'm going to make three. All of these little things that feel like, well, that's not going to teach me how to play poker perfectly. You know, taking a break is not going to make me play poker perfectly. Meditating before I play is not going to make me play perfectly. Uh, these are just like small tweaks, but that's what you're looking for. You're looking for small tweaks. You can't have studied every situation perfectly. You can't find the right answer every single time. You can't be in a great mood and fully focused for every hour of every session of every day that you play. But what you can do is learn a little bit more come to the table with a little bit more focus on average, leave the table more often when you're unfocused, leave the table when you're tilted. Through all of those things, make fewer mistakes and make those mistakes less impactful. As my mentor Tommy Angelo puts it, lop off your C game. So you've got an A game, you've got a B game, and you've got a C game. And one way to improve is to study more and get better at poker and increase your A game, make your A game higher EV. But a faster and more effective way, kind of more foolproof way, to improve uh, your overall EV is to lop off your C game. And you can do that either by getting less tilted through a number of different practices and or making sure that you're leaving the table when you're going to be on your C game. You can do wonders for your overall win rate by quitting in good spots, by taking breaks when you should take breaks, by introducing pregame routines, by studying, et cetera, et cetera. But if your criteria is, will this eliminate mistakes? Otherwise, what's the point? Then you're not gonna do any of these things because they don't eliminate mistakes, they reduce them. If you live in a fantasy land where you just think that your knowledge is your execution at the table, you are not going to accept mistakes and you're not going to start stacking up all of these small wins that when stacked on top of each other add a lot to your win rates uh, or reducing your loss rate if you're an underdog in the games uh, and you know over time your progression through the stakes now, some of you might be thinking, is Phil really telling me that I need to take breaks all the time on a regimented routine? Do I need to meditate every day? Do I need to have a healthy diet and be working out every day and doing cardio before my sessions uh, to get a clear head? Do I need to be talking to the mental game coaches? Do I need to be reading books about uh, controlling my mental state? 
Um, and the answer is no, you don't need to be doing all of these things, but each and every little thing that you do adds up. Whatever it is, I want you to walk away from this video having resolved to do something new, having resolved to add one habit that is gonna help you improve your win rate. Another thing I recently read is that if you consume knowledge in some way, but you haven't changed anything that you do, have you really learned something? So I'm urging you to take action. It's really easy to decide on one habit, to introduce it, and to, over the course of the next few weeks, see an immediate increase in your ability to win at the table. It might be small, but after adding that habit, you might be able to stack on another habit three weeks from now, and maybe three months from now, a third. And by that point, you'll have a significant impact on your overall EV. You can never be perfect at the poker table or away from the poker table, but you can get a little bit better right now. I've outlined several of these mindset hacks and tactics to improve your game in a 44 page ebook, Poker Mindset Strategy. It's completely free to anybody. I'll put the link in the description and uh, in the pinned comment. So check that out if you're looking for some of these habits that you can introduce right now.